This is 2013's Odd Thomas. Warning, spoilers ahead. We open up on a desert town called Pico Mundo, and Odd is confused on why we should care about who he is. He doesn't think that he leads a spectacular life, but he knows that it's definitely an unusual one. He looks down his stairs to see Penny looking back at him, but when she walks away, he simply follows her through town. In a quick little flashback, we see that his mother is a special case who thinks that she has abilities from God. Apparently, she was locked up in an asylum before he was 12 years old, though. Odd believes that he has the same abilities, but he keeps his a secret. Eventually, Penny leads him to a street where he runs into Harlow. Harlow thinks everything is fine, but Odd seems to know that Penny's blood is in his pocket. I'm not sure what's more odd. Odd having the clairvoyant ability to see the dead and help them solve their murders? Or the fact that Harlow collected some of Penny's blood on a cloth after he killed her? It looked like a hit and run, but hit and run people don't collect a souvenir. That's what a serial killer does. Once Harlow knows that he's been found out, he hops out of the car and bolts. Then we see Penny exactly how she was the night that she died. Odd chases after Harlow, and he eventually catches up with him at a pool party where he tackles him into the pool. The two of them get into a scuffle, and it leads to the house of the pool party where Harlow chases down the household child. Why would he try and go after the kid? This is an escape moment. Not time to knock out another crime just before getting turned in. This here Harlow needs to get his priorities straight. Odd ends up stopping Harlow, who ends up getting taken away to jail. Odd sits by the pool as Penny walks across the water. He apologizes for how short her life was, but he assures her that where she's going is a better place. Odd says that the dead don't talk, but he isn't quite sure why. After Penny fades away, Chief Porter shows up, and he asks Odd why he didn't come to him first to let him try and do this right. Porter tells Odd an alibi for why he figured out Harlow killed Penny, and they go their separate ways. Later that night, Odd walks home, and he can sense something else is out there with him. Suddenly, dead people with no faces show up and beg Odd to save them. They grab him and start carrying him to his house, but someone shows up and starts shooting all of them. Odd gets hit in the process, but in the morning he wakes up with no wounds. Odd heads to the grill later, and he starts his shift with V. Later during his shift, Stormy shows up, and Odd tells us that he's destined to be with her forever. Stormy and Odd head back, and she tells him that she's not happy with his chase shenanigans with Harlow the day before. He promises her that he's not ready to die yet, so she has nothing to worry about. Everyone seems to be having a great morning until Odd notices an evil entity making its way into the grill. Odd calls them Bodox, and we get a flashback to a point where he knew someone else could see them. He tried to warn off the other guy that if the Bodox find out that they can be seen, they'll kill you, but it was too late. The other guy had given one the finger, and sure enough, a truck comes plowing through and hits him. That would also be me. When an evil entity pops up, what would you do? You can't tell me that you wouldn't do some stupid stuff like that if it became an everyday occurrence. Back in the present, Odd watches as the Bodoc make its way through the grill, and he tries to act as though he can't see it. As Porter and Stormy go to leave, the Bodoc seems interested in following Stormy. But just then, another man comes in. The Bodoc seems more interested in him. Suddenly more Bodoc show up, and this is a sign that something extremely violent is about to happen. The man is swarming with Bodox, and when he goes to leave the grill, Odd tries to follow. V comes out with him, and she claims to know that he's holding on to a secret power. She tells him about a dream she had where she saw her own face as she died, and Odd got nervous after hearing that the other people in her dream were wearing the same bowling shirts as the souls he saw last night. I think it's time to evacuate the town. There were more Bodox than townsfolk in that grill. Just cut your losses, gather as many people as you can, and get out of town. At least grab Stormy on your way. Also, go figure that he finds the guy in the mall. The mall has got to be a gathering center for psychopaths. It's the perfect place for people watching, and there's an endless number of potential victims. As Odd walks around the mall, he finds Stormy at her job at the ice cream shop, and she takes a break to eat an ice cream with him. He tells her about the guy that he's looking for, and sure enough, he pops up in the shop. Stormy heads back inside to check out the guy, and when she comes back, she tells him that he bought two gallons of ice cream. As the guy leaves the mall, the Bodox seem to stop and sniff around before disappearing into the floor. That's not comforting either. There's something even worse than that guy out there to pull them away? Or maybe he's not a threat anymore now that he got his ice cream. Maybe he just had a sweet tooth that was making him potentially violent. Odd takes Stormy's moped and follows Ice Cream Man to a house just outside of town where he leaves the ice cream before driving off. Odd breaks into the house and looks around. Once inside, Odd feels a chilling sensation that draws him to a room at the end of the hallway. Inside, Odd finds a portal hole to the other side that grows all over the room. Odd senses that a lot of Bodox are coming, and he runs to hide behind a bedroom door in the living room. Oh my god, look at all of them. What is this, Armageddon? If it isn't, could you imagine how many Bodox would show up for the end of the world? 
After the Bodocs leave, Odd answers a call from Stormy, and he tells her that he found a gateway to hell. He goes back to the room with the hole, and he finds what looks to be a shrine to all sorts of deranged murderers and psychopaths. He finds out that the man's name is Robert, but just then, someone shows up looking for Robert. This man let him borrow a gun, and he wants it back. Before Odd hops out the window, he finds a clue that points to tomorrow being the day that Robert is going to make his move. Odd heads to Porter's house to tell him about what he's found out, but Porter's finding it hard to follow everything. Porter heads inside to have a fellow officer look up Robert, and he comes back to tell Odd that he has nothing on Robert. He'll still put a tail on Robert since Odd is never wrong though, and Odd heads to his dinner with Stormy. Oddly enough, they head to the steeple of the church to have a picnic, and I'm wondering why I haven't had a picnic at a church steeple yet. Robert pops up from the woods and the picnic is over though. Robert's terrifying. Not necessarily him, but that walk is uncomfortable. Imagine this man storming out of the woods with that walk? Yeah, no thank you. Odd and Stormy take shelter in the church. But when it becomes clear that they aren't safe there anymore, they hop on Stormy's moped and speed back into town. Well, he sped off as quickly as he could on a moped. Odd tries to warn Porter about Robert, but Robert says he still needs more than a little bit of stalking and vandalism to really stop him. Odd and Stormy head to the grill to eat, and Ozzy shows up to talk to Odd. Ozzy brings Odd a trinket that's supposed to protect a heart from a gunshot and Porter calls Odd to tell him about the scene at the church he found. Odd decides to use his senses to try and find Robert, and he's drawn to a bowling alley. The uniforms match the description of the souls from Odd's nightmare, but he feels like he's missing a piece of the puzzle. They leave to talk to V, but they run into Officer Eccles outside, who doesn't believe anything that Odd says. After Stormy charms Eccles, she and Odd head to V's house, and V had a good feeling that Odd would be showing up. They go over her dream, and Odd tries to connect to her psyche. During the flashes of the dream, they see a carousel and a large crowd with water gushing in the background. When she sees just how bad the aftermath of the violence is, V pulls away. Odd goes upstairs to check on the kids, and he finds multiple Bodocs just waiting for the event. Odd tells V to take the girls away, and they head off to try and figure out V's dream location. Stormy has a moment where she's scared for Odd, and she knows that Robert is to blame for it. Odd promises that he'll always come back to her in one piece, but then there's a scream. Lizette comes running around the corner, and she's being chased by two dogs. Odd rushes to her screams, but one of the dogs tackles her. Odd hears gunshots, and they come across Lizette's body on the ground with another man standing over her with a gun. He shot the dogs, but it looks like he was a little too late. Odd tells Stormy that this is just the beginning of things. After the police show up, Odd tells Porter that the dogs are the same ones that he saw at Robert's house, and Porter puts out an APB on Robert. Porter tells Eccles to go to Robert's house, but Eccles thinks that Odd's hunch is far-fetched. Eccles tries to blame Odd for the crime, but Porter sends him to Robert's house while he sends Stormy and Odd home. Odd heads to Stormy's house, and he gets a little distracted when he sees Stormy in her underwear. Odd leaves Stormy in her house with some detectives waiting outside, and he heads back to his own place. Once there, he finds a gun on the ground, and he finds Robert's dead body in his bathtub. Odd knows that he's being set up, so he decides to handle the body on his own. He notices a gunshot to the chest, and he also realizes that rigor mortis had already set in a long time ago. This leads him to realize that he actually saw Robert as a poltergeist for quite some time now. The last time he saw him alive was when Robert left his house after getting the ice cream. Odd throws Robert in the trunk and borrows the neighbor's car to take his body to an abandoned prison before heading back into town to try and figure all this out. As he drives down the street, all he sees is a town full of Bodocs. It actually looks like one of them realized that Odd can see it. Meanwhile, a shooter comes to Porter's house and shoots him in the heart. When Odd gets to the hospital, he finds out that the trinket he gave Porter actually stopped two of the bullets and slowed down the third one. Odd heads back to Stormy's house and he goes over what he knows. He tries to convince her to stay home, but if he isn't staying with her, she's not staying home. Stormy's absolute wife material. She knows what she has to do, and it seems harder for her than for Odd or anyone else. She won't even look back at him because she knows that will make him more vulnerable at a time when action is needed. She better not die. Although he'd just keep talking to her even if she was dead. So I guess it would work out either way. Odd goes back to Robert's house to search for clues, and he answers a call from Stormy as he checks out the refrigerator. Odd finds random body parts inside, and when he closes the door, Robert's waiting for him. Odd tries to explain how him telling everyone that Robert was a suspect must have made him a liability to his partner. But that's not soothing to Robert. Odd escapes the house just as Robert blows it up, and he heads for the prison to see Robert's body. When he checks Robert's body, he notices that he has a tattoo that matches Eccles. Eccles is the partner that's going to carry out the crime. Odd heads to the mall, and he finds Eccles' squad car. 
Once inside, Odd finds that the security guard has been killed, and he knocks out a masked assailant. Odd thinks the Bodocs have been manipulating him, and he takes Varner's gun. Out in the mall, pieces of V's dream start to come together, and he knows that the big event is about to happen. A portal to hell opens up in the corner, and Odd watches as thousands of Bodocs make their way into the mall. Just then, one of the Bodocs notices Odd watching them, and a woman can be heard screaming that a man has a gun. Pandemonium ensues as the exits are locked down, and a shooter starts opening fire on the crowd. Lizette's ghost leads Odd to a truck, and it turns out that there's a huge explosive that's going to go off in three minutes. A Bodoc possesses Eccles, and he shoots at Odd who steals the truck. Odd is hit a few times, but he manages to get the truck away from the mall. Eccles holds on outside the truck, but when the truck is far away enough, Odd jumps out and lets the truck blow up with Eccles. Odd becomes a national hero for saving all of the potential victims, and the town celebrates his return home. Odd heads home with Stormy, and the two of them go about their normal lives. One day, Porter comes to visit with his friends, and they tell him that it's time to stop living in the fantasy. What's left? Odd says goodbye to Stormy, and he watches her as she moves on to her next life. Odd leaves town, and he swears that he'll be with Stormy again when the time comes. He heads to Vegas, then the credits roll. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.